global supply chains are in a state of absolute chaos. Every time things seem to be getting back on track, a new disruption emerges and pushes the entire system to the brink of a collapse. Even the mainstream media is extremely alarmed about the worsening of this crisis. Widespread shortages are being reported all across the country, but the situation may escalate to a whole new level over the coming weeks, as millions of supply chain workers are threatening to quit their jobs. Over the past 18 months, seafarers, truck drivers, airline workers have dealt with strict travel restrictions, testing requirements, and a crew change crisis that has left nearly a million workers stuck at sea for almost a year. After so many challenges, millions of them are reaching their breaking point and planning to quit the workforce, posing yet another risk to congested ports, container vessels, and trucking companies. Last week, the International Chamber of Shipping sent a letter to heads of state attending the United Nations General Assembly warning of a global transport system collapse if governments do not lift movement restrictions to transport workers and give them priority to get vaccines so they can travel freely around the world. For decades, supply chain workers have coped with underpayment and extremely long hours of work. We have taken them for granted and forgot their extreme importance to operate our complex and important system of distribution of goods. Before the health crisis, things had always run smoothly. Many of us just assumed it would always be that way. But now, organizations that represent those transport workers are saying that global supply chains will grind to a halt if conditions do not improve. Global supply chains are beginning to buckle as two years' worth of strain on transport workers take their toll, the groups wrote. The letter was signed by several groups, including the International Air Transport Association, the International Road Transport Union, and the International Transport Workers Federation. Now together, they represent 65 million transport workers globally. All transport sectors are also seeing a shortage of workers and expect more to leave as a result of the poor treatment millions have faced during the health outbreak, putting the supply chain under greater threat, it added. At this moment, the situation is looking particularly dire at our ports. Dozens of cargo ships are arriving every day and having to wait for days to finally get unloaded. In the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, at least 75 cargo ships are carrying an estimated 500,000 containers, and no one seems to know what to do or how to handle the unprecedented backlog given that there are not enough dock workers to empty all of those containers. There are not the people in place to move the containers and the chassis is where they need to go. So you got a lot of stuff piling up at the ports and the warehouses. When that happens, the harder it is to get the stuff that's ready to move. Explain John Drake, Vice President of Supply Chain Strategy for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Never in history have U.S. ports faced such acute congestion. To make things worse, the container backlog on the other side of the world is even bigger. In China, at least 154 container ships full of import cargo are stuck offshore waiting to unload and refill containers with export goods in Shanghai and Ningbo ports, and that's according to EEC, a company that analyzes carrier schedules. All across the country, a total of 242 container ships are waiting for berths. Whether it's due to heavy export volumes, Typhoon Chan 2, or a new wave of confirmed virus cases, the growing congestion in China is yet another problem for the trans-Pacific trade. Congestion in Chinese ports means that the flow of exports to U.S. importers is significantly constrained. The devil in these things is the whiplash effects, highlighted Simon Sunburl, founder of EEC, in an interview with American Shipper. He says, 
What you'd rather have is more stability, not these swings, and I think what everybody fears is that the swings will become even more volatile. When the system is already this stretched, all of these unexpected events can be a casual factor in congestion. This comes as retailers struggle to restock their inventories before the busy holiday shopping season. Waiting times are more than doubling, shipping delays have become the norm. As this crisis aggravates, we're now being told that this year's holiday season is gonna be a turbulent one. Retailers are sounding the alarm on the upcoming holiday shopping season due to serious supply chain issues that are slowing shipments of manufactured goods around the world, CBS reported, adding that chaos theory in its simplest form says if a butterfly flaps its wings in China, it means rain in Central Park. Well, that applies not just to weather, but supply chains as well. And in the Bay Area, it will impact everything from computer parts to your car to the gifts and the toys on your Christmas holiday shopping list. So, if you really want to get something for the coming season, you should probably place your order right now. Because there's a huge chance that it will not be available later. According to the Chamber of Commerce, the delivery delays are only going to get worse from now on. U.S. consumers are already seeing empty shelves all around the nation as shortages intensify, but in addition to dwindling inventories, supply chain issues are also pushing the price of everything to new highs, leading the surge of food prices. Only this year, the food industry has been plagued by a myriad of natural disasters and cyber attacks on meat processing plants. Today, meat prices are roughly 30% higher than they were a year ago. Same goes for chicken and pork. In fact, bacon is now more expensive than the United States than it's been over the past 40 years. The average price for bacon, this breakfast staple, has now risen 28% during the past 12 months, inflation-adjusted consumer price index data shows. New data released by the USDA indicates that U.S. hog herds face the most significant monthly drop in two decades. The main reason behind this drop is the fact that farmers reduced hog herd development over the past year due to labor shortages at slaughterhouses, as well as a massive spike in the cost of animal feed. Last year, the domestic pork supply chain was one of the hardest hit right after the health crisis started the spread in America. Panic buyers depleted meat counters at record speed as lockdowns started to be announced. Meanwhile, the Food Service Channel completely shut down overnight, breaking a major arm of the supply chain. On top of that, meat processing plants became virus hotbeds as employers were forced to work long shifts in close proximity to each other. Cyber attacks only aggravated the slowdown in production as hackers demanded millions of dollars in ransom to unblock operations earlier this year. Now, USDA data exposed that the U.S. hog herd decreased by 4% in August compared to the same period a year ago. It has marked the largest monthly drop since 1999 after analysts only anticipated a decline of only about 1.7%. That's according to Bloomberg. Freight and labor costs have also risen significantly, said Trey Malone, assistant professor and agricultural economist at Michigan State University. And the entire food industry continues to face growing inflationary pressures as supply chain issues keep fueling food price hikes. Chef Miguel Escobedo runs the Al Pasta Papi food truck in San Francisco. In a recent interview with CNN, he said, I've been in the restaurant business since the early 80s. I have never seen anything like it. In a year, the chef Miguel Escobedo has seen dozens of painful price increases that have forced him to pass along those costs to consumers in order to save his business. 
at the grocery store, soaring food prices have been absolutely devastating for working poor families who allocate a high percentage of their incomes to basic and essential items like food. A wide range of food staples is nowhere to be found at this point. In the latest wave of shortages, potatoes have become the newest item in short supply. In a recent article, the director of research at the American Economic Liberties Project, Matt Stoller, described that some fast food outlets are completely running out of French fries. The economic analyst revealed that he received an email from a Florida realtor who was in a hurry. He stopped at Burger King for lunch. He saw a sign, sorry, no French fries with any order. We have no potatoes. At first, he thought he was imagining things. What, what kind of fast food place runs out of fries? Is this, he wondered, a sign of things to come, he wrote. It's a good question. Fast food exists in a land of plenty of surplus of mass-produced food with a reliable infrastructure of trucks, of trains, of farms, and distributors. Shortages of everyday goods conflicts not only with most of our lived experiences, but also with our very conception of who we are. There's a name for this framework. It's called affluence, Stala pointed out. However, due to chronic underpayment, workers are simply leaving our distribution lines and working for big corporations, and everything is being turned upside down in the United States food supply chain. Few are more frustrated about the backlog at the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach than truck drivers admit the growing chaos. Truck drivers that would transport cargo on flatbed trucks are being recruited away by Walmart and Amazon to exclusively pull box trailers or shipping containers. Large items like steel piles and pre-made concrete pieces either can't fit or can't be loaded into containers or box trailers. Vendors tell me demand is as high as 40 to 1, meaning for every available flatbed truck, there are up to 40 waiting customers. The roads around the New York City metro area are as clogged with truck traffic as ever, but we're facing longer waits and higher prices to haul non-containerized cargo, Stoller exposed. Now, while many Americans are still relying on the false idea that widespread shortages will never become a reality, hey, we're the world's most prosperous nation, aren't we? Well, soon enough, they will notice that extensive shortages are already here, and they will persist for months. The unprepared are usually the ones that end up becoming panic buyers, and once they realize that our leaders won't come up with some sort of quick fix to this crisis, our entire system will be shaken to the core. As the blind lead the blind, our country heads to yet another critical season, while most people remain unaware of the looming threats. Thank you very much for watching our video. If you found it informative, please check out Seven Year Apocalypse, the latest book by the economic collapse writer Michael Snyder. In the meantime, of course, don't forget to subscribe to us. Please turn on that notification bell to keep up with our next videos. Here's to the next one.